Hey guys, we're talking Kansas for the Cup Series race. Now this will probably be a longer video just because, I mean, I like going over this type of stuff. Uh, by kind of reviewing Dover, a lot of this is going to be, you know, at least you should know who we're looking towards for Kansas this weekend. It's going to be the same guys. But as we go through and truly review Dover, and this is going to be more so uh, me reviewing my own stuff, or not even reviewing my own stuff because I've already done that, but it, walking through my thought process entering this Kansas race, because there's quite a lot of things going out there. Um, one, because I got a lot of things in my mind. One, this is a very interesting shirt. Like, I would implore you guys to, like, check out the uh, the clearance section on fanatics.com. Like, this is, the, this is a wild-ass shirt. Like, you can't see it. But it has, like, Las Vegas Raiders, like, embroidered in, in black. Like, it doesn't even show up even in person. I have, like, a Stolen Valor, like, Raider patch on the side. This is a wild shirt. Um, two, uh, when we look at... Dover and uh, let's go ahead and bring this stuff up on the screen and especially as we, as we talk about the uh, the first half of the video or the live show we did on Sunday uh, in regards to a lot of the feedback uh, very polarizing which all sim talk is and typically uh, it'll always be that way but uh, very very loudly on both sides of the aisle now for me where I stand especially in weekends like that to where I'm entering like 1500 of my own money uh, through my lineups, like that is something I, I'm considering. Like you'd be uh, an idiot to not uh, analyze stuff from that point of view. And the reason we're gonna get into that, and then how ownership broke down, and then everything. Uh, but like the conversation with sheets that I had, I love like that aspect of DFS. Uh, and a lot of the people that I know who are playing either high volume or just love diving into things, they love that stuff as well. Even if they are a brain player more so than like a sims guy like they love that type of analytical uh outlook and stuff whereas like it seems to me not even in, in like a bad way or like a, like a derogatory way or like a, an insulting way but it seems like the louder the this stuff doesn't matter or like this type of topic is is boring and stuff comes from a lot of the lower volume players which yet again is so interesting because i feel like they're the ones who can benefit the most specifically in their contests from like analyzing discussions like that um like i feel like if you're in that realm you would want to listen to that type of stuff more uh because that's what a, a more of the like high volume players are doing i don't know that's just kind of where i'm at there um and it's very ironic that the slate that we talked about that the most was a slate that had uh ownership spread out uh because truly like for the past like true month uh, before that, you had had a very centralized ownership on people, and then in in this race, we ended up having you know ownership. I don't think you can really see that, um, but you ended up having ownership pretty spread out uh, between a lot of the lap leaders. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, as soon as we pulled the ownership from uh, the CSV and, and Knobs, uh, Knobs, Knobs, pretty sure it was, yeah. As soon as he uploaded, it, I was like. Oh man, I would have played 60% Larson just knowing this because I thought he was going to come in like 40, 45. I thought Larson would be the highest stone guy on the slate. That, that was crazy. I don't, this is even wicked. I don't know. If, like just speak it out loud. I don't even know if this is due to the fact that things are flip flopping so much of like, Oh, Larson's going to be chalk. Let's get off of him. And then like nobody ended up playing Larson. Very, very interesting slate. When you look at it, like of how ownership broke down. Because, like, Larson should, like, never be, uh, like, the fifth or sixth highest owned guy. Especially, like, he should, should always be at, like, 40% ownership. that Or, like, 30% ownership. That was nuts. And so, like, I honest honest to God, before the race even started, I saw this and I was like, I've already lost. I played this slate so horrible, so bad, just right off the bat there. Um, I do want to bring up, so clearly this is how we're looking at uh, the Dover race and how everybody ended up uh, forming out. And for me, when I'm wanting to build before we get or like by the end of the race, what I'm going to do is hopefully end up being on like the highest own or the, the most productive guys, the guys who are getting a lot of laps led, the guys who ran up front and stuff like this. And yet again, kind of analyzing my own stuff yet again, we're not looking at Texas just cause that's its own thing. I'm not even including that, um, in this stuff, but yet again, we've removed the old Dover race. Now we can start filling in, you know, more of this year and stuff. And when I look back at how everything went last week, um, and from a personal note, like 
my my shit was dead on like lap twelve. Like when because I was very high on Gillen, um, I used him as like the baseline, as like the building block on, on nearly all my lineups. And so like right off the bat, I already, I already knew like there was no chance I was gonna have the optimal lineup. Uh, and then my other guy who was basically not in any of the uh, the fucking Gillen lines was Priest. Uh, and so that killed another portion of the lines. And so right off the bat, like I knew I would not have a chance to take down anything. Um, entering the day so it was very easy for me to go ahead and just look at how things would end up um, going on and how they scored and everything and you could tell that I was or you can and you can see that I was very much high on the place differential not coming through which yet again speaking out loud and going over everything that we've seen here um, and if I'm kind of bouncing around I, I apologize but I want to get a lot of things out uh, like when you look at the place differential that came through Larson uh, specifically, like that's very impressive. Um, it might be like, well, duh, it's Luke Cole Larson, but I mean, like, very impressive in a sense of moving forward this year because Dover is very much a pivot standpoint. When we're looking at, I mean, I took Dover off of here, but when you look at Dover, that is the very that not even very difficult track. That is a very uh, technical track in terms of what the car can do setup wise, especially a going through the field handling. Um, in the draft, I mean, uh, you know, Larson couldn't pass Hamlin at the end of the race, but I mean, like, Larson was able to get through traffic. Uh, Truex was able to be very quick, despite the fact that he had a splitter separating from the car. Like, that's usually a huge uh, downswing in terms of car performance, but the fact that, like, Truex was able to wrap the bottom so well, like, that's, those are the aspects that, at least for me personally, I look at of, like, okay, true things to note, like, Larson's for real, Hamlin's for real, Truex is for real. Like, those are your three favorite guys entering the month of Kansas, and it's all based off of where we're coming off of Dover because it's such a pivotal point in the schedule, and it shows where you are at. You're not going to make drastic, huge changes between Dover, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte because this is over a three-week period. Like, you're, we're, we're pretty much where we're at. The main changes or main adjustments, especially if you're not at the top here, you're making wild or you're, you're, you're trying to try new things to get ready for the playoffs and stuff. And so typically uh, you have Vegas, Dover, Kansas, Darlington, Charlotte, and even Nashville very much correlated between like the guys who are running up there uh, or running up top. And so when we look at Dover uh, actually going back really fast. And so when I'm just over or when I'm looking at my own stuff, you know, and I look at how I played Las Vegas, which yet again, at this point, like for me, and it's so funny because a lot of people are like, you're you're a Byron fan. Like, I don't give a shit about Byron. I'm just saying he's been uh, under own. And the fact that Byron had a terrible day at Las Vegas and I still made money was uh, pretty phenomenal. Uh, the fact that he started fourth and just had issues. And even with Dover, this was a winning day until, you know, Byron got involved in the wreck, despite the fact that I had basically my entire bottom part of the lineups end up having like zero to four points. Um so, like, that's also uh, very, very interesting. I, I got to at least, uh, yet again, pre-Bell, Bubba, Byron crash. Because, as you can see, I use Bubba as, like, the, the center point of the 7K range uh, to fill out lineups and stuff. And so, pre-that, uh, still a winning day, despite the fact that I was very much wrong with Larson. Uh, very much wrong with uh, trying to separate the lap leaders and stuff and having no Martin Truex Jr. either, which I didn't do at Las Vegas as well. So I've been incredibly lucky in that regard. And so uh, speaking out loud and seeing what I need to do specifically, it, it's very much Larson, Hamlin, Truex, fucking regardless of where they start. Um, Larson has shown that he has the best car uh, in traffic. Like he can get through the field no matter what he is. If he's up front, he's going to be getting fast laps laps led we see that Trix has basically been the third best car consistently out of las vegas and dover scraping off both fast laps and laps led um maybe not last laps led in in, in, in las vegas let me do let me do a little check a because i do not remember if he led laps and we do not have salaries on DraftKings, so i cannot click through that and just uh see it very quickly but uh, anyway the reason i'm bringing that stuff up is when I look at the two, like, this is a drastically different build, and I understand that we have, yet again, I'm sp just speaking out loud here for my own stuff. Um, Dover was, as I said, since it's such a tipping point for the season, that was a situation where I'm going to lean into one of two things. One, it's very much 
place differential aid would come through. And the reason I didn't do that is, you know, when we looked at the PD that came through the last two weeks, the last two intermediates, when we look specifically at Texas and Dover, uh, Larson and Kyle Busch have both come through on those individual races in two separate outcomes or two separate um, individual, um, uh, not even results, but uh, getting there through two different ways. Larson, because he was just, you know, speed racer. And Kyle Busch, by um, staying out long, yellows, uh, despite the fact he went a lap down and stuff like that. And that the Dover race more most more so justifies the speed in the car versus the actual starting position of who they are. Like like if we have Hamlin, Larson, Truex, even somebody like Blaney uh, starting in the back of the field, they very much have the speed to get up through the field. If it's anybody else, I'm very I'm certainly more and more hesitant on playing them, especially if they're expensive. Like Christopher Bell was just horrible. We didn't we didn't want to play Christopher Bell at all um, at Dover because he hadn't been showing that speed. He just wasn't able to get through the field. Um, and, and stuff like that, uh, you know, and end up being like, you know, the 22nd true best car in Dover. Uh, let's see. Did I see racing reference? You're going to load so I can just see if Truex led laps at Las Vegas, please. So Truex led four. So, you know, technically these three cars, uh, we'll talk Reddick in a moment, but Hamlin, Truex, Larson, Hamlin, Larson, Truex, those are your three best cars. That is who we're playing in the month of May, that is that is uh, that is it. it. It's been it's been very much reinforced uh, through the Dover weekend, and so like for me, you know, when I start seeing you know truly at this point, and and it's also um, you know like I forgot what they're called like line graphs and stuff, but like when you're looking at like st stock portfolios and stuff, which I'm not even trying to act like I know anything about that. Um, I'm just saying like when we look at the tracking of where these guys are at, like when we look at like Hamlin, and that's why I like using this versus numbers just because I can identify it way better. We're seeing that Hamlin was not only just consistent right off the bat, but he's still, he's still there. It's certainly there with Larson as well. Um, and we're seeing him move farther up as dumb as that sounds. It might look and when we have Truex, um, just a horrific, you know, playoff brigade or run last year, but it's, been consistently these three guys here whereas like you look at byron for example and you see that and man he's 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 fallen off not truly like this much like las vegas based on speed probably six best car dover very much disappointment uh and this is mainly due to the pit lane issue that he had but uh byron is very much oh his ownership's going to be 14 percent. yeah it probably should be at this point like the the byron wave of of playing him is is here and gone which is what you always need to be open to uh, things changing and stuff like that. Like I was just on Byron cause he, he won me a lot of money and he was under owned a lot. And it's not because like, Oh, he won me money. That equals me having to play him because I'm biased to him. No, it's just driver WB was under owned and was running well. And I chased that into this year and it just hasn't performed. Now, I'm not saying he does. He's not going to do that anymore specifically. You know I mean? He's, or, he's still going to be under owned, but that's truly going to be like a hard true cutoff. You know, I think I had like, I ended up with like, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I ended up with 10 Byron lines this week. Uh, probably truly going to get it down to like six or seven uh, or five, uh, just because that is probably the ownership. Uh, probably more so five, 25%. The field's going to be probably like mid teens. So that's probably right where I want to be uh, moving forward and stuff um, with William Byron. The Kyle Bush. Um, very interesting. So, like, the reason why I was so, or personally playing Kyle Bush was because of what he was showing at at Texas. As I said, not able to go through the field, but running identical lap speeds to the guys up front during certain points of those in that race would show that hey, he might be able to maintain a running position higher up at Dover or lead more laps and stuff like that. And so, yet again, that was just the decision that I went to um, for. Dover and so speaking out loud either what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong maybe I mean maybe this helps you maybe it doesn't uh just some people like knowing where I'm necessarily going with um and what I'm personally doing is comparing the true builds that work through Las Vegas and uh Dover and I mean clearly you can see a drastically different um array of those types of lineups and stuff uh once we get past Amon Larson Truex uh the Reddick 
Uh, certainly interesting. Very much an underperformance, or at least for me, uh, did not do what I was expecting him to do. Did not kill, truly destroy lineups uh, based on his pricing. Uh, do we even have, let me just make sure, because this is midday Wednesday. Let's just go ahead and see. Oh, we might, we might actually do have salaries. I could have just been doing that. So Redick is at 10-7, which is justified. Uh, that's what we're going to expect. So Truex is 10-3. Uh, so Hamlin Larson, both 11K. Truex, 10-3, $5,800 on average. All right, so that's very easy to do um, with Larson, Hamlin, Truex. Uh, very unlikely that you don't need two of those three drivers and or uh, all three, so that's perfectly fine. We can very easily do that. Um, but, like, when you look at Reddick, and, yes, uh, you know, he, he, he won Kansas, and he ran well at the first Kansas race last year uh, when – I don't remember who won Kansas last year. The spring race last year, uh, rather. So let's go ahead and just take a – Quick gander, and as I pull this up or pull it on the side, let me talk out loud about what I want in a driver at Kansas and why Dover is such a, um, in terms of this aspect to the setups, is such a uh, good data point to use. So, you know, we all know the air block, we all know the air blocking going on with this next gen car and what these cars or these drivers are doing um, to make it to where the car behind them cannot pass them. You know. Like you can run somebody down, then once you get like three, two tenths behind them, um, they can just air block you, and you just can't do anything. Um, especially to the like first, second, third, fourth car, like when you're that fast and at the pinnacle of the speed, pinnacle of the pack, like that's where it, the discrepancy is. You don't have just the raw setup speed or the raw control to get through the field as you would if you're like you know Larson, for example, coming up through the field last weekend at Dover. Um, so when we look at Kansas and how this race specifically runs, you want the leaders are going to be running up hot, uh, up up top. That's just how it's going to be. That is the fast lane. That's where the car is going to be comfortable. That's where you're going to run. Okay. So the reason why that's important in terms of the mid tier plays, or not even mid tier plays, but like mid pack or guys coming from the back, uh, or just passing in general, when you're entering a top dominant track, and yet again. For those people who, you know, you want to pull more data points, Kansas, you run top. Las Vegas, you run top. Darlington, you run top. Like, it's all correlated. Uh, Dar Dover, one lane, ba practically running up against the wall. Like, you can't move up because you're getting the rubber, like, or you're getting the uh, the uh, the marbles and stuff. One lane. Um, so, like, in order to pass people, in order to have, like, some sort of fucking speed, like, true speed, not like guys who, like, are set up on the bottom because you're not just going to run the bottom the entire time people will be moving up the track and, you know, like top line is just where you're going to be. Um, in order to make the passes, because somebody's going to be air blocking you on the top, on the top lane and you don't want to run right behind them because once you get in their wake, you just go in the wall and you're scraping the wall. So like you have to run below them or you just, you know, you do the slide job to the bottom of the track and then come back up. Well, you need to actually have a car that can do that. Like you can't just have your car be decent on the top and then like, oh, shucks, I got to pass a guy who's also on the top. And then you go to the bottom and you can't pass anybody because like your car just doesn't work down there. Like you have to have like actual speed to be able to get through the field and actually pass people. Um, and so the reason I'm bringing that up is like when we're looking at Tyler Reddick and stuff. Um, yes, 2311 has been uh, very consistent at this track, specifically in the spring. Uh, well, no, if it was the spring last year, let me look. Totally forgot what I was even looking up. Who won the spring race last year? We got Hamlin. Um, so it was Hamlin. Um, when you look at the, or the, 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 the aspects of a setup and of the team and of the drivers that you want to chase for potentially place differential or laps led in this race, it is very much people who have shown that they have just pure fast cars. As I said, Larson getting up through the field and doing what he did last week, very impressive. Hamlin, wildly consistent. Martin Truex Jr. still being fast with the damage that he had in the in the in the uh, in the race at Dover, very, very impressive. Dover is very much a data point that I centralize around for the entire season, especially the month of May. I don't mean just repeat the same thing, but that's literally what I do. Um, and so like it's these three guys who are clearly the best cars. I would be, I would be absolutely floored 
if these three individuals don't win four of the next five races, if not all five of them, in this month. These are the main contenders for that. So each week, we want to play a lot of. Uh, that that's also why like the ownership on Larson, I was like, I've already fucking lost man All right, right off the bat, the approach the process. I thought he would be higher owned. He ended up not being, that was a huge, huge disappointment. And just, it's something I'm completely angry about. Um, at Dover. Um, anyways, we get through the field. One thing that's like wildly impressive, wildly shocking. Two things actually. Uh, one is Stenhouse. Um, when you look at where Ricky had been pretty, 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 very, very, very impressive at Dover. Uh, very, very impressive run at Dover. Um, and yet again, you know, I was, you know, just reviewing stuff today. My stuff was saying a lot, and I mentioned this in the live show, like it was Tony Hosevar, it was wanting me to play a lot of Stenhouse and I just overrode that manually. I was like, I'm not playing any fucking Stenhouse at all. Um, and also, I mean, I explained this in the live show as well. The reason I had Byron so high is if it was showing me that I could, that I was able to leave. And yet again, I use Gillen as the main um, anchor point here, just on the raw speed. I mean, projected for twenty, but based on just what we're getting from Front Row Motorsports with like an actual like Tier One Ford team uh, starting back there, pretty easy. And the laps that he was running in the short time he was there was very much not a. Uh, 32nd place car is very much going to be like a 24th, uh, even 22nd type of day. Anywho, anyway, um, so clearly, like, if you paid down, you were able to get up to it. The, just my stuff I was running earlier did not show me that I was that I would realistically be able to get up to the Larson. That's why I, I use such a high projection on William Byron, because if it's leaving salary on when I'm running my own stuff, then it's like, okay, I can get two trucks or I can get the Larson. I end up having a lot of stuff where it was like 100, 200, uh, zero, uh, salary left over, so I said, okay, that's not going to be a route that I'm going to follow today, uh, regardless of what Byron does. I just wanted him to be kind of like a placeholder so I could see that. Anyway, um, so when I'm looking at uh, Kansas this weekend, um, oh yeah, so like probably need to probably need to trust my own shit more uh, on Stenhouse. Um, also with AJ, like that, actually outside of Stenhouse, I mean, Hemrick stayed out. Uh, Got a phenomenal finish by just running long, which is just another tilting thing that we have truly somebody who didn't deserve. Did it like, what a god awful play, man! That is insane, coming through and getting such a good finish. A lot of lot of lot of value plays came through. Zane Smith came through. Uh, Rick Ware guys, Hemrick. Uh, that is wildly like the the bottom half of the salary. That many guys coming through at Dover is is wildly impressive. But raw speed is AJ Allmendinger. That was absolutely shocked that he ran 10th, 11th, 12th, 14th, 13th all day. That is very, very respectful. And yet again, it's like when even speaking of colleague in like the uh, the 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 lower series in the Xfinity series, and we see how bad or how poorly. Um, Josh Williams, Daniel Dye. I mean, those guys all worked. And I said I wanted to play them and stuff. But, like, it, it's like a chicken and the egg question, okay? Is colleague falling off a cliff? Or is it because they have shitty drivers? Are they getting shitty drivers because they're falling off a cliff? Or are all the good drivers just leaving and they have bad drivers and stuff? It's very much a case like that in the lower series. Because, like, SVG is learning. He's got training wheels on. You got Williams and Die who were just like horrifically slow, crouch jumping in the car. Like we don't even know what we, we like. It it's wild. And so like when you see like AJ hop in the car at in at a Dover for Xfinity and have real speed, or I mean he runs full time, but he's in that he has like real speed. The AJ run here is is pretty impressive. And then when you look at that compared with you know where he's been in these other races, like AJ is actually there. Like that's. That situations you can you can look at, especially coming off of the end of the um, last year at Homestead, which is a very difficult race, very very high on tire well tire wear. Like that correlation is is pretty impressive for for me to look at and just see. And so like I'm pretty sure we're gonna have um, like Derek Krause like fucking five thousand again, Daniel Hemrick at fifty five. Like dude, 
it's wild. Like the hand, the 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 collie cars can have like real speed, and it can be just held down by the drivers. It is insane. Um, absolutely insane here. So, anyways, we continue to go down. Like we've Larson, Hamlin, Truex. That's who we're playing. That's priority. Two out of those three guys in every line. That's literally the approach I'm taking. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Uh, Blaney. Very much right where he is, uh, and as we can kind of see how the graph is going up, you know, we're slowly moving from like the 10th, 11th best car to, you know, very much a 6th, 7th best car. Uh, even with like Logano, where's Logano? Um, who else? Like Logano, Bubba, oh, Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs had another good run. Um, which was impressive to see, specifically starting back at 19th, moving up, gaining those positions, and ended up scoring. Where are we at? It's like Gibbs is, he's 93. Man, that's a wild one, man. 45 point. What did I have him for Dover? Had him for 42 points, which is uh, yet again a situation of where Gibbs, 25. Where's Bubba ended up being? Bubba was like 17, 11. Like, it's just... Took a lot of stances. Wanted to be very aggressive with Dover. Not, not very result-based on the contest is bad. Result-based on um, process, not looking at results and contest. I'm not... I'm disappointed as it didn't go the way I wanted it to, but I'm, I'm not... I don't feel like I completely missed a ton of things because, as I said, I was still going to cash for profit before the Byron crash, despite being very wrong about Truex, despite being very wrong about other people. So, like, even in that sense, like, uh, I'm almost more tilted with how Dover planned out just based on um, just being aggressive and it not turning out for me. Anyway, just kind of speaking out loud. Um, anyways, we move on and look at the rest of kind of where everybody is entering this race. So I guess we can just kind of go down by looking at um, the, let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and open this up here. Uh, let me just go ahead and put the seat. I hit pause, didn't even hit pause, hold on. I meant to do this, because I have no idea what is going to pop up on the screen when I'm like, I'd like to uh, import some recent downloads. Uh, in my luck, I'd have like my fucking W two or my ten ninety nine on the fucking screen. All right, so let's go ahead and go here. Let's go ahead and look at where these fine fellas are at in terms of salary, and we can kind of preview it like that. All right, and I need I need the ID for fuck name. All right, move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and take a gander where we're building here. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and look at Hamlin. Top of the line, as I said, we're playing Hamlin. We're playing two, if not all three, of Hamlin, Larson, Trix. Trix is mispriced uh, just based on that. And also, like, even based on, I've been incredibly lucky that I've just not had any tricks this year uh, at these 1.5s, and I have not been completely crucified for that, because that has been a true miss on my point. But, uh, like, Redick, track history-wise, yet again, this is where, you know, thinking of the Sims, thinking of where people are pulling data from. If they're pulling that data, then, Henry, then, then Redick is going to be very popular. And it's also another thing, like the AJ stuff is like wild. Yet again, why this this data point, uh, the practice laps. And I mean, we had errors in in this, but like the practice laps is like so interesting. Like that's why you, we don't ever want to overweight stuff. Like I did not, I did not weigh the practice laps at Dover at all in any form or fashion. But like AJ is a great example. Like it's insane how well AJ performed. That is like shockingly impressive for AJ. Just like, wow, I didn't expect that. Anyway, uh, related to Reddick, if things are pulling from track form and shit like that, it's going to love Reddick. Him at 10-7 based on this type of stuff. I mean, great at Darlington, great at Kansas too last year. Second best car at Las Vegas. He should have performed better at Dover. 
um, just just straight up. He should have been. He should have performed better if if a lot of the stuff was lined up. Even Bubba to the same extent. Like Bubba should have performed better at Dover last weekend. Um, very much just could have been happenstance of how it just ended up happening. Um, but that is something to note. Uh, so entering this week, if we get realistic race conditions for the race, which they practice in queue on Saturday, so they should be very similar, um, then that'll be a good indicator of where Reddick and Bubba will be um, in this race. But, like, man, even Bubba from 9-5, holy fuck, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, Byron, yet again, as, I, as I've stated, just uh, time of Byron's probably gone. Not gone, but, like, I mean, he's, he's going to continue. He's, I mean, he's going to – certainly these are more the outliers because, I mean, he wrecked out over – ran into damage at Las Vegas was most likely going to be the sixth best car day or at Las Vegas, but very much went from, you know, a top four contender, top three contender to now you're falling back to six, seventh. Who's taking over that space. Who's going in, who's, who's moving up and stuff like that. Um, so we look at tricks who I got nothing there or nothing negative to say there. Bell is very much unfucking playable. Um, based on his price needs 50 points to just pay it off. Raleigh or raw, uh, without any, like, he would need to actually, like, run away with the lead and, 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 like, kill the field and stuff. Even if he has place differential to offer, like, very much just showing – or very much falling off. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Joe Gibbs and even the uh, the rest of the Hendrick gang. I mean, I mean, Elliot is certainly there. Well, we'll get to him. Actually, we'll just look at it now. So, like, Elliot – it's just all over the goddamn place, man. 98. Probably going to be a situation. Very, very hard to play him if he starts up front. Because we just haven't seen that uh, movement to get through the field. Hell, at Texas, had a mid-place car. Had, basically had a car like this. Stayed out. Uh, got a yellow. That's how I got to the front. Like Those are situations that we need from Bell, from Elliott. And I typically don't like playing that way. Uh, and just playing raw guys based on speed. And so Elliot, like, so we see that Elliot doesn't have that true raw speed. Like, he's able to get through the field. But, like, when we compare it to, like, Larson, it's just Larson by himself from Hendrick. And then Bell's, you know, or Byron and Elliot are there. And then, like, I don't know what Bowman is doing. And then we look at Joe Gibbs. It's just Hamlin and, and Truex killing the field. Bell's doing whatever he's doing. And Ty Gibbs is learning. And Tiger is like the ninth best card. So it's like not even like a team based dynamic. We're at the point where it's just raw speed out of these guys. Um, we look at Lart Wallace. We look at Bubba. Uh, like, man, I just got to. Oh, boy, man. Just got to see it. Got to see it from, from loading off the trailer and uh, potential uh, projected points here. Uh, same thing with Gibbs when we look at Ross. Ross, now we get to 91. Then what, what's that? Like 46, 47 points. Like that's where we're at. Like, okay, man. So we get, we like, we like, like. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Very much like. Uh, and very much we'll see here. Then we get to Chastain and we're like, okay, his price tag, uh, based on what he can do at Kansas, um, based on, you know, potentially starting you know, in the teens or whatever, like that makes Rasha Stain appealing when we look at Kyle Bush. Very much same thing. Um we're very much concerned here with these outcomes. Even Kansas as well. Like it's very much just highlighting early guys that look pretty interesting here. It'd probably be these fellas. Even not that I don't really want green for that. We'll do blue. Um, Kyle Bush probably not for me. Blaney at at eight eighty six. Oh boy, very attractive. Very very attractive. Uh, looking like a really really good play. Um, you know, going back to Dover, uh, I was very much wanting to see if that comes through on Blaney. Um, just because I got and you know. Did he lead? I think he did lead. But then he got passed and stuff. Um, we have... Yeah, he led 47 laps. Like, that's... That's really, really good to see, man. And, he, and you can argue that he lost it. 
You know, he didn't maintain, he, you know, he didn't run up there all day. I mean, let me change it. He didn't maintain the lead all day. But, he, I mean, he was in third, fourth, fifth all day. That's why he was the, you know, fourth best car when it was when it was said and done. He was the sixth best car at Las Vegas when it was all said and done. 8,600 for Ryan Blaney here. I mean, that that's looking very, very attractive. Like, that 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 is, you know, as I go through and look at things, like Blaney is a guy that I'd want to be on, uh, that I'd probably want to be regardless of what the field is going to do. Um, kind of that same mentality that I've had with Byron. Like, Bla- this is I probably want to start playing a lot of Blaney here, especially if we keep having salary that is allowing us to get to him because he's, you know, 86 this week. He's 96. I mean, he's been dropping like a sack of potatoes, my guys. You know, just the last couple of races, 96, 11, 10, 2, 10, 5, 9, 5, 7, 5, 10, 5, 11, 2, 10, 2, 10, 2, 9, 8. This is the cheapest Blaney has been. Uh, cheapest Blaney might be this year. This is a week to play Ryan Blaney uh, very much regardless of where he starts. If he starts up front, as he did at Dover, he has shown the ability to get that lead. Even if he starts second, you know, like you can't just jump from, you know, 12th to get the lead, you know. I mean, unless you stay on the run long. But, like, if you want to get the lead on pit lane, if you want to op- have an opportunity to be a lap leader, like you have to be in a position to take advantage of if somebody up front messes up or whatever. Like Blaney's looking really, really good this weekend, man. Um, we look at Logano. I just realized I got to make sure I'm recording so that I can leave. Pop- I would be so pissed if I just like was talking to myself for fucking twenty minutes and I hadn't been recording. Logano and Blaney, kind of, you know, very similar. Like, I'm more interested in Blaney. Uh, and I've been wanting to just play Logano based on the principle of I probably need to just get to Logano. Um, but typically, the Penske guys, I mean, Cendric doesn't even count. Like, Cendric is so useless. Um, but Logano and Blaney, Blaney and Logano, very much like if I want interest in Blaney, I should probably do Logano because they're probably at this point going to be trying to get – Logano up to where Blaney has been. Look at Bowman. I mean, Bowman having a car, you know, being up there at Dover is impressive. Certainly, so far, the anomaly outside of what we've been doing here. Yet again, we want to use Dover as a pretty good anchor point for this month. And so, you know, was this the anomaly or are they making, you know, strides and stuff? Um, so with, with Bowman, that's uh, that's like where... I guess game theory and gambling is really going to come into play. Like, do you want to, I would probably lean to trusting Dover, uh, but based on a lot of what the show and like, man, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on, on Bowman at the moment. Uh, Kozlowski, you know, RFK has very much fallen off, uh, very much fallen. Like if you, yet again, include Texas in here, like uh, you pick and choose your points, but also did not have speed of Texas very much falling down. That's concerning. Same thing with Chris Busher, especially if people want to be on on these guys. That's uh, that's probably one where I'm probably gonna get beat by the field if they start coming through because I will probably not be having much interest in Chris Busher and in uh, Kozlowski uh, in these situations. Gregson moving up and and which bro, sh- like, just speak it out loud really fast. How bad? Is those legacy cars, man. Those petty GMS cars. Those legacy motorsport cars. Like, that is... It is insane how bad those cars are. People wanted Gregson's head last year. People wanted him out of the series. People were saying he didn't deserve it. He sucks. It is... It is wild. How bad those cars were. We are in this, we are in, you know, the fourth May, we, like, look how, look how well Gregson is running. Look how well these, these SHR cars are performing, like, in general. But, like, Gregson specifically, if he was getting this out of that hunk of crap legacy car, that's insane, man. Eric Jones getting the win, although I think that was two years ago, like, that's insane. It is so crazy how bad those legacy cars are. And we entered this year... You know, seeing that, like, you know, SHR would be uh, the uh, the quote-unquote, like, shitter team at the bottom. Like, they're the ones who are going to... And it's just been legacy. It is wild how bad those cars are. That's insane. Suarez, too. 
lot of lot of struggles from Suarez. This is uh very much. I mean that that Dover runs disappointing, but a lot of concern, lot of lot of lot of concern, a lot of things you don't want to see from Suarez. Oh man, a lot of like man, fuck, dude. I I I played much of him at Las Vegas at all. Oh Suarez at Las Vegas. Yeah, I didn't play Suarez at Las Vegas, but I fell into it at Dover, thinking he'd move up. Very concerning with with Suarez. Also, yet again, when I say this, you know, because some people like I, I I'm recording this to like you know help people out or let them see how I do things or you know help them out in some form or fashion. That is not a case of oh man, Suarez has burned me. I've lost so much money on Suarez. I just can't be playing Suarez. I, I hate those discussions so much. I hate those opinions. And when people are like, this guy's on my dead to me list. This guy's dead to me. Rui Hachimura is on my dead to me list. This guy sucks. Like that, like I, I hate those conversations so much, guys. Like it, it, it's, that should never, ever even cross your mind in DFS. Like you should never, ever have biases, whether somebody's won you a lot of money or lost you a lot of money. You have to have, a short memory in that span, and you cannot have any biases towards anybody. I'm just speaking out loud that Suarez has been very much disappointing. We need to see drastic changes in this uh, in this organization. You might be like, well, you just said you like Chastain. Due to main, mainly two reasons. One, Chastain has been showing consistently more speed, and two, the pricing. Uh, Suarez at 72 like that's a concern. You might not even get like your thirty-five or thirty-six points from him or whatever you need. Like that's that's where that is. Whereas like Briscoe, I mean, same thing. Mid, middle tier is just interesting. You know, Barry ran well here. Oh yeah, fucking! Oh, I totally forgot Stenhouse. What the hell is Stenhouse doing? He wrecked himself. He's just merging into traffic. Like he hit he hits Barry. Like Stenhouse, you're an idiot. Like what the fuck is Stenhouse doing at Dover? Um. That's insane. What a, what a, what an absolute baboon. Um, just merging into traffic off of two, clip and bury and breaking your own car. That's insane. Um, Michael McDowell. It's so weird that they've been, that, you know, they've been doing well. Or they've had true decent speed at the short tracks. And we're seeing a drastic downturn in what McDowell has been doing here. 68 interesting so a lot of these have like I don't have true uh, opinions or stuff like that it'll just come down to uh, what I kind of project them to be at that's also another thing of like why you know uh, like these things here you know I have you know value on this this is also what I'm just building I just want to see things based on where they're at in price so I can see I'm not usually concerned about where the actual projection is I'm more so just I just want to see how close to value some of these guys are at so like McDowell you know, even last week, that's, you know, 66. Just to move on to this week, 68. In a situation where he'll probably be similarly projected, you know, how close to a 5X can we be either up or down? Like, that's that's very much dependent on where McDowell is. Sindrick, Chastain, Austin Dillon, Hosevar. A lot of this stuff will depend on where, um, where we're at. Like, fucking Jimmy Johnson. Jesus Christ, man. It, and it's also not even like Jimmy Johnson. Like, the, these cars are, are terrible. Like, they are absolutely atrocious. So we can't even hate on, on Jimmy Johnson a lot. Like, Nemechek is, I think, very similar in skill level to Gregson. And uh, when you compare Nemechek to Gregson, last year, one-to-one, -one, base practically identical. Uh, that is a car concern with these cars here. Corey Heim, uh, very, very impressive. I mean, he ends up finishing, um, let's see, finishes 25th, like that, 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 that's wildly impressive for Corey Heim. Very, very impressive. Wish I would have, where was I at personally on here? Probably, probably wish I would have been more, what bills are these on? Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch, mm, unfortunate builds. Uh, that Corey Heim was, is very impressive. Um, very so just a one to one with Nemechek. No no reason to move on past there. We're in an Austin Hill car this week. In the let me just make sure. Let's 
go ahead and check. Uh, give me a moment. Sorry, just want to check the entry lists for this. Oh my God. Um. Yeah, we got Hill in the. We got Austin Hill in the thirty-three. So pretty much right where Dylan has been at. But fifty-eight for Austin Dylan. I'm okay with that. Getting we get we get to Hemrick, we get to Burton, we get to Riley. Is he in the fifty-one? Who the fuck is Riley racing with? Yeah, he's in the fifteenth for Rick Ware, which isn't drastically bad. Like and so like when we get to here with with even uh, we'll just include everything from six K down. Uh and I know my my face is kind of blocking these guys. So like these guys, these individuals here. I think that'll be probably the most difficult aspect of the entire weekend for me for for not under projecting them and for not over projecting them because uh, any of these guys down here I'm going to probably I, I feel I'm at risk of over projecting if they start in the back of the field and under projecting if they start in the 20s or higher up. Um, I'm perfectly fine with anybody down here uh, and whatever whoever I end up on I'm not going to be mad at. Or I'm not going to be upset about or whatever. Very similar to last week. I'll probably spread out more just my own, not necessarily a reaction to having so much go in last week at Dover, but I probably do need to do a better job of not just being um, blind to the potential upside of one individual driver. Um, I think even last week I played, I had Zane, I probably need more Zane, but Nemechek, even had Haley. But uh, I very much need to be more open-minded with these guys down here. Anyway, so as we, as, you know, that's my preview for Kansas, you know. Uh, removed from the fact of looking through pit data, or looking through lap sled or lap data and stuff like that. That This is where I'm at entering entering Kansas. These guys in, in blue, very interested play, very good plays um, just on the weekend or from the outside looking into this week. Uh, and... I'm excited for Kansas. Uh, yet again, it's this month of May. Gonna probably won't do the 44 again, um, but you know, I'm gonna be throwing down another 500 or whatever uh, for the Cup Series here on Sunday. Uh, I'll look at the Truck Series uh, one or video right after this, as we can talk through and, and where we're gonna go there. But that is the Cup Series preview for Kansas. Hopefully, it helps you out in some form or fashion. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.